Hi, Magdalena. It's so nice to see you. I remember we met uh, in uh, November when I was running uh, a Shine program for WPP in London. And you flew over from Copenhagen. And I must say, I noticed you rather quickly because you were you know, participating, you were coming up in front, sharing, you know, you were very clear around what you wanted to achieve in the program. And that was very impressive. So Shine is a program uh, that a lot of companies uh, uh, do for their women, you know, to get more women to the top and particularly to do, you know, to make them more confident, more clear around where they want to go and also to have more presence and influence. And we were 40 women in a room for two days and we had loads of fun and, you know, women from lots of different agencies, lots of different European countries. Yeah, and that's why I met you. And now I invited you to uh, be interviewed for the wonderful platform She Can that my uh, 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 friend uh, Stefanie Ferrario is doing. And I'm helping her because I believe in really telling women's stories, you know, how they got to where they are today to be role models for others. So Magdalena, how are you today? Well, thank you. I'm, I'm great. And thank you for very uh, sweet words. And thank you oh, for you're having welcome. me. You're welcome. So uh, the first question is really, and I want you to answer that. So tell us about yourself and tell us what you do. About myself, without uh, too many words, I think I'm a, um, I'm a very determined, uh, happy person. And what I do is I work as a managing director um, at Wavemaker, so a media agency. But I don't really see that as, you know, me. I do a lot of things. I mainly accomplish things, I would say, whether that be personal things or work stuff. Yeah. But I also think you have four kids, don't you? Yes, I do. I have <laughs> four kids and I have a husband. <laughs> but what do I do? I don't. But I think it's interesting because I don't identify. You know, when people ask me, like, who are you? I don't I don't say if you ask me, are you married? I will say yes, but I don't, I would never say I am a wife. I, I am a mother. I'm a, because it's not in my head, I'm me and I am all of those things, but it's not one particular thing that I, you know, identify with. I like that. So you play many roles uh, simultaneously. Yes. I think we all do, right? Yeah, we all do. That's true. Some days, some more than others. So the next question is, so how did you get there? How did you become the MD of Wavemaker, which is a media agency for WPP? And also, you know, how what were the pitfalls? I mean, you know, and how did you overcome them? Yeah, I think from a very young age, and I think it's important to say, like, I, I remember having a very weak mother. So for me, it's always been important that I that I'm self-sufficient, that I make enough money so that if I end up in a relationship with somebody where I'm not happy, I can always like leave. I'm not dependent on anyone else. So for me, also getting into the media agency or having a career, those were kind of, it was super important for me that it was a, a job where I could develop, where I could make money and where I could have like this typical career. I don't really know why that is important. I just know that it is important and I've stopped digging. So when I joined Wavemaker, it was important from the very beginning to see this ladder. And I think I have for, for four years, actually, I was stuck in the same position. Um, and the pitfall then, which I've learned now, is that I wasn't strategic enough. I was kind of demanding, but look at me, I'm doing great. So therefore I should have a promotion, but I wasn't like willing to do the work that it takes, you know, networking and putting myself out there I was just just but only doing great work and expecting that that would you know take me places and it didn't and I loved what you said on the on the cohort in London where you said that meritocracy is like the biggest myth and I strongly I agree so much because I feel like I'm living proof that that's exactly what I did I did great jobs or great work and I was expecting people to come to me and say wow you're you're doing so great here is this role for you and it was the realization that I need to, I need to, you know, show myself up and I need to mm. take what's fine for others to, 
yeah, to also realize that. So I think that was for me my biggest pitfall back then that I didn't know that. So yeah. I was expecting it to kind of like see yeah. me. Yeah, we me. women often think we can put our head down, you know, and then uh, things will happen magically because people will notice how good we are and how hard we work. And and sadly, I think your performance, how much is it? It's only 20% really of your <laughs> reward. So being seen and talking about it is as important, you know, really building a profile and being out there, having allies, having supporters. Yeah. So what is your main motivator? You talked a little bit about that, you know, so I think I'm hearing a, a value which is definitely independence, freedom, but also a bit of security. So yeah. what else? But also the, the 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 need for constant like developing to feel yeah. that I'm developing and that I'm becoming better at something. And I think when you're a generalist, which is definitely where I categorize myself as, I, I, I feel even like now more than ever, it is so important to feel like you're developing because technology is moving so fast that it's it's easy to become redundant unless mm -hmm. you're really like good at something. And I, so I think for me, it's like the constant uh, figuring out what are the skills where I need to develop even further and in what kind of direction. So for me, that is motivating mm -hmm. to constantly become better than I am today and never... You know, I, I I think the people that stop feeling the urge that they want to become better, those are also the people that you look at that become bitter and sad and where, you know, life is kind of over, even though you're 60 years old and you should be in your prime, but you're just kind of, you've given up because, you know, it's too late kind of. I don't ever want to become that. I always want to thrive and become better. Mm, amazing. So uh, what are what are you most proud of to date? Um, I'm most proud of like me. I, I feel like I've been through so much uh, hardship and I don't think it has, I haven't allowed it to define me. I, I, I feel like I've worked, I had so many like skeletons in my closet and I've, I've chosen not to become bitter. And I've, I also, I am proud that I, I can be proud of myself also knowing that I have so many flaws, but I'm okay with that because, yeah, I think I, that's my, I'm so proud of that for feeling that I really love myself, even though I've had so many um, times where I felt like maybe it is hard to love me because of who I am based on my, my shitty childhood, basically. Right. But yeah, I think that's for me because I can show this love and share it on with, to my kids, to my husband, to my friends. I am this caring person even though maybe I shouldn't have become that person but I am and I feel like that's thanks to me for not giving in to becoming you know bitter and yeah and what are your flaws or skeletons just name one because I'm wondering is that a gremlin is that an inner saboteur or is that true my flaws and skeletons not all of them, maybe one. <laughs> maybe one. Uh, I think for sure. Uh, I'm uh, like I'm, I'm very much a feminist, so I can become like obsessed with words. So I'll be very annoying. Like when people formulate themselves in a sense that I feel it's diminishing, I will definitely like I can't let that slide and pass. So I'll be like, I don't like the tone, or I don't like how you put pressure on that word. And my husband sometimes is like, but you're crazy. Like I didn't put anything and he becomes like, it, it's a thing where we will fight where I'm like, yeah. but I, I just simply don't like how you're using this word and he doesn't understand it. And I also get to a point where I'm thinking, maybe I am mad. Maybe, <laughs> maybe it's in my head because I'm, I'm so very wary. Like I don't like, I want, I don't, I don't like equalities, but it can also become too much where where you know where I'm where people feel attacked because I'm constantly like correcting and they're mm -hmm. coming from you know a good place so that's for sure something that I need to work on I also have a huge ego so I say that I I like feedback and I do but I need to tell myself that when I get the feedback that I don't because my initial reaction is to explain why you're you know you're wrong in, in your feedback so I you're need becoming to really defensive. practice 
Yeah. Yes. Thank you for your feedback. And stop there. And just like whatever I think, just let it be. Yeah. And I do that because I understand that it's the the right thing to do. But everything in my body is kind of like, I want to tell you why you're wrong or why if I have been wrong, there is a reason for this. And I that's definitely a flaw and something that I'm not proud of, but it is for sure a, p- a part of me, you know. I think yeah. you're just being human, Magdalena, if I'm honest. I think having uh, being passionate about things and then having a little reaction if other people are are not or 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 you know, I think you know everything you do is probably pro- comes from a good intention. yeah, and I think sometimes we have to allow ourselves to be human as long as you don't buy into the story. I've just spent the whole weekend dissecting you know what happened and what's the story and I think the drama starts when we make up a story about what happened and it might not even be true and then we live by that story or we have that story from the past and it goes into our future I think that's that's dangerous territory where I have to stop myself as well but the next thing is uh <clears throat> top tip for other women I mean you gave us some already you said it's not enough to just do a good job you know, you also said, you know, you really have to network, you know, and you need to work on your profile. Anything else? Like articulate. And if you can't say the word, then like do the exercise with yourself. Like put down on a piece of paper, what is it that you want? Because I think a lot of us, we expect others, we go to our leader and we say like, look at me, I'm super talented. Like surely there must be something else for me. Mm. And then you get the question, well, what do you want? And you can't answer. So yeah. if you can't what I it want is to do it. I want to do it. How can somebody help you? So I think that <laughs> being and also like not not being like shoot for the star in the sense that you know if you think that you can't do it, say it anyway. Because I see it all the time. Like I'm constantly. This is my new me, and it's it's like I'm getting opportunities like never before. And all of the opportunities, I say, yes, I can do it. Yes, I'll do that. And I have no idea. Like I don't. Like um, do I have the skills for for speaking to all of these people? But, but I don't know. But probably just equally as good skills as somebody else. But I don't feel confident that I do. But somehow, you know, if you just just say yes, and then you'll figure it out. Yeah. So say yes really to every opportunity is also that. Yeah. Don't think you need to know how to do it, or you need to have done it, or you need to figure it all out. Uh, you know, I think just doing some things, like me doing this interview. <laughs> And it's a lot of fun. I'm really enjoying it. So I totally agree with you. So what is my next question? Do you have any role models and then plans, goals, dreams for your future? Role models, like I don't, uh, I definitely become very inspired. And it sounds like if I'm, I'm being like, I don't know the, the nice word to say it in English, but I, I definitely, you inspired me a lot. You Thank came you. from nowhere. And I, I gave that feedback as well, that even though the course for me, because I've done so much searching, I felt like the experience for me was delivered by you. And I think not maybe in what you said, but by your story and by you just being you, which is it's hard to grasp, right? And I think for me, that becomes very inspiring and a role model in the sense where I'm thinking, well, if you can do it and if you can just figure out out of, nowhere that you want then everything is possible so I think a lot of people that are in places both career-wise but also mentally where it looks like they're a they're a whole person they haven't just sacrificed everything to become successful because that's not what I want I want I want the whole I want to be a successful businesswoman but I also want to be able to have a family and to be a friend so I definitely get very inspired by people who seem to have it all in the sense where they don't have to, you know, cut off an arm and a leg to to become successful. And as for goals, I mean, yes, again, don't ask me why, but it is important for me. I want to definitely make my mark. I want to, I have a specific goal of entering the EXCO, which is the group uh, leadership board uh, here in the Nordics, where of course it's mainly men. I definitely want a leading position again, on a, on a cross um, company level here in the Nordics, because 
because I, I feel like it's it's strange that it's only men up there. Like we're a lot of great women. Why? Is yeah. Also, we wouldn't think women? that about the Nordics. We always think it's all it's all it's fifty yeah. fifty. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm also taking all your advice. I'm having discussions with the executive talent coaches uh, across the globe, and that is also a good advice. I think it's 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 kind of like you know when you're in the dating phase of like meeting somebody <laughs> if you are only meeting one person you become kind of desperate and limited but if you have others you become very casually cool and somehow it's it's more attractive for everybody involved and i feel like that's where i am with my career now is that i'm also very open to to other <laughs> alternatives and i think Lovely. it really it's yeah it's i love that thing. You're putting you're putting possibility and opportunity out there, and I think that's the only way. You know, we need to believe in in possibility, and we need to really create this blank canvas. You know, that we can create from. You know, rather than putting all the stories that we have made up about our past or our potential into the future. So I think you're doing that really well, and I think that's why we should stop. Because I think the top tip is, you know, don't put your past into the future. You know, there's a blank canvas always available to you. And if you believe in possibility and opportunity, then the world will will bring that to you. You know, I really believe in that. So thank you, Magdalena, uh, for 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 your time. And, uh, you know, you can check out uh, uh, yourself on She Can on the YouTube channel or on the website. And yeah, so thanks a lot. And I'm now uh, saying goodbye. Thank you. Thank you.